what is up peoples before we start let me show you what we are going to create so if i hit the play button we have this nice aircraft that we can pilot hopefully i can pilot and not crash it but you get the point i can rotate it pilot it to the left side go down and it's basically aircraft physics which is probably the title of the video i don't know still which title i'm going to give you but you know there you go anyways this is what we are going to create it's Pretty cool, pretty awesome, pretty amazing. If you want to learn more, make sure that you join the Game Development Academy, hit the subscribe button and all of that stuff. And let's create this weird thing that we had on the screen. Alrighty then, my game dev gangster Ronio. Before we start, this is not a complete beginner tutorial, so make sure that you have some prerequisites. You have created a few basic games, at least in Unreal Engine, before you follow this along. Also, if you want to follow along, make sure that you download this project because it is prepared for you as is, as you can see it right now. Link to the project is awesome2.com. Link is down below. You can click on it. Okay, so over here we have everything prepared. Well, I mean, we have the city prepared and we have the hut prepared over here so you can go through the HUD and see what we have here also in the graph for the HUD you can see what we created here so basically we have two custom events that will set the aim image position and set the bore side image position but I'm not going to go through that because it takes you know time from us and we will not learn anything specific so there you go anyways over here I also have the aircraft pond which is prepared and everything is located here in the blueprints so open this aircraft on. And the first thing that we are going to do is over here, we have some variables. So we have this HUD reference variable that we, you know, is the HUD reference over here. We have it. That's about it. Next, we are going to create a few other variables. So I'm going to go here, click on the plus button to create delta seconds. As you can already assume, this is going to be a float variable. So let's go here, float. There you go. And yeah, we're going to make it public. Moving forward, we have the camera smooth. So let me just click here on the variable camera smooth. Over here, I am going to, and this is smooth speed, by the way. So camera smooth speed. Next, we have a new float, which is going to be our mouse sensitivity. I have issues spelling, so I need to, you know, talk slowly like that when I'm spelling the words. We also have the aim distance. We also are going to have over here thrust. And it's not trust, it's trust. So it's not like you trust me because you do. But anyways, moving forward over here, we have the turn torque. So torque, there we go. And this one is going to be a vector because the torque is a force that we can apply to rotate a physics object basically that's it over here we have the force multiplier there you go and from here i'm going to set that to be a float we also have the sensitivity so click on the plus button sensitivity and we have the aggressive turn angle there you go now of course we need to set the values for every single one of these and also make them public all there you go, public, public, public. So delta seconds, you can already assume what it is, so we're not going to touch that. Camera smooth speed, I'm going to set that value at two. The camera sensitivity, I'm going to select that, or actually the mouse sensitivity, is going to be three. The aim distance, so over here, aim distance is going to be 50,000, well, not dollars, but 50,000 units, okay? So <laughs> moving forward, we are also going to have the thirst, which is going to be or thir thirst, thirst, I don't know how this is pronounced. It's not like thirst, you're a vampire, so it's not like you're going to, you know, get my blood or anything. No, no, no. Over here, minus 500 for the torques X, minus 800 for the torque Y, and 600 for the torque Z. Let's go here, compile, and save this bad boy. Next, we have the force multiplier, which is a million number. So basically, we're going to set that to million. And over here, you will see it's one million. Okay, next, we have the sensitivity. And the sensitivity value is going to be five. And last but not least, over here for the aggressive turn angle, we are going to have a value of five as well. Now that we have that out of the way, we are going to create a couple of functions. And over here, we're going to start with the first function. So click on the function, and I am going to call this one get bore site and location. And it's going to have a return node because it will return a value. And that value is going to be a vector, and I'm going to call it return value, simple as that. And the value that we are going to return is we are going to say over here get actor location. 
And from the actor location, I'm going to say here plus vector. And this one is going to be plugged in over here in the return value. But what I'm going to add to it is go here, get actor forward vector. And I'm going to multiply it. So multiply this forward vector with the aim distance which means basically we'll have this aim distance in the forward direction and then I'm going to add these two vectors together and then I'm going to plug them and return them with this value or return their value so to say. Next we are going to have another function over here that I'm going to call get controller aim and location. So from here it's also going to have an output and I'm going to call this one return value and from there this one goes all the way to here there you go and i'm going to get the controller aim scene and from it i'm going to get the world location of that controller scene and i'm also going to get the forward so get forward vector there you go and i'm going to do the same thing as we did before so i'm going to say plus vector not plus integer what am i doing so plus vector there you go and then this is going to be plugged in over here in the return value or the resulting vector but before that i'm going to go here multiply that with a float and the float that i'm going to multiply is going to be the aim distance one more time so voila there you go this is for the controller aim end next we are going to go here and we're going to have a get bore site start location now this one is also going to have an output and this one is going to be a return value like that and for this return value i'm simply going to say get actor location and return that location as the value so make sure that you compile and save that and the last function of this type that we need is going to be get controller aim start location and from there it's also going to return a vector return value all of these are returning a vector that's why i'm touching the parameter type so they are returning a vector we're going to get the controller scene and from here get the world location which is going to be the one that we are going to return 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 now also one thing that i want to point out is that all of these functions are going to be pure so select the function over here and make it a pure function in the editor do the same thing for the bore site and all previous ones that we have created make sure that you compile and save every change that we make to these functions voila there you go and this one as well pure and voila what does it mean pure for those of you who don't know well it means basically that if i call this function you see it's already there we don't have it doesn't have this pin that we need to you know plug into something and the execution order flows like that instead we can call this function it will execute right away and simply return the value that we need to use and that will be pretty much it next we are going to have another function i'm going to call damp so let's go over here and create a damp function which is also going to be pure but this one's going to be specific because it's going to have a few inputs so this input is going to be a and this input is going to be b and they are both going to be rotator so rotator or rotator anyways we are also going to have another, which is going to be a type of float that I'm going to call it Lambda, which is basically time. We can also call it time if you want. So Lambda time or whatever. I'm also going to plus it again right here. This one's going to be Delta seconds. And last but not least, this one is going to be shortest path to that dump basically and it's not like dump your girlfriend dumping you or something like that no 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 anyways this is also going to have a return value so output and i'm going to call it return value and it is going to be a rotator like that so what's gonna happen here is that i am going to lerp so call lerp on the rotator there you go and this one is going to be the returning value and the one that i'm going to plug into a is the parameter a into b is the parameter b and over here for the lambda time well what i'm going to do is multiply it with flow this is some weird math calculation i saw online that you know I don't know what even this is so multiply that with delta time let's go over here and say minus one and then from there I'm going to say e which is going to get the exponential not no 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 not this not this 
it's exp which is the exponential to the power a you see here which is that calculation that is going to perform it and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to say over here float if it allows me to type so float multiplied with float and the float that i'm multiplying here is one and i'm multiplying this here with one and then plugging that bad boy here and of course shortest path we should not forget that if we want the shortest path there you go this is how we are going to get the shortest path voila so compile and save that and this is going to be our dump functionality which again is not you dumping your girlfriend or whatnot so don't message her that you're dumping her wait a moment or two before you do that okay wait at least until the end of this tutorial and let me just see did i maximize yes i said here application scale to 0.16 i thought that the windows are a little bit small i don't know why anyways i'm going to turn off all of these functions or the pure functions that we have created because now we are going to create run autopilot which is not going to be a pure function and also update aircraft physics now for the run autopilot we are going to select it because this one's going to have a few inputs inputs in pull inputs there you go fly not flight but fly target and this one is going to be not a float but a vector next parameter is going to be a float so over here float and it's going to be out yaw and it is going to be over here let me just see out pitch and last but not least we're going to have the out roll there you go we're not still going to code this function but we need to prepare it at least and also what i'm going to do is add over here local variables that we need for this function so it's right here you see local variables and this one is going to be local fly target which is going to be a vector next over here we're going to have angle off target this one is a float so let's go here float and next we are going to have aggressive roll there you go we are also going to have here wings level level roll and wings level influence there you go so these are the parameters that we have for this function as i said we are not still going to code it because we're going to go here inside of our update physics and this is where the fun is going to happen first this is the one that we are going to you know code first but what's important that we do over here and by the way for our yeah that's okay everything we did so far that is okay i thought that we need to return a value here for the run out of pilot but we don't now next over here inside of our update physics we are also going to have a few local variables so roll override and this one is going to be a boolean so roll override next we are also going to have pitch override so pitch override there you go also a boolean by the way auto yaw is going to be a float voila Next, you're going to have auto pitch and auto roll. All three of these or the next boat, the next two that we have created are going to be floats. So what's going to happen inside of our update aircraft physics? We are going to go inside of our sequence. And this sequence is going to have one, two, four. So from zero to four, basically five executable pins. And the first pin over here is going to set the roll override to false. And I'm going to add here an extra whatever this is called on the node so that we can move it around. Next, I'm also going to set the pitch override also to false. So we're going to override these to set the auto yaw to zero auto pitch as well. So set auto pitch. It's pitch. There you go. I have issues spelling and last but not least set auto roll and voila. There you go. So first we are going to reset all of these values. Next, we are going to go here in another sequence. So sequence. And for this sequence, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in a branch from the first one 
there you go so we are going into the branch and if this branch is true i'm going to set the role override to true there you go but what is the condition for this to be true well for that let me just click here there you go just move this a little bit here we are going to right click get role axes and the role axes is this one that is set here in the input so here it is role axis which is going to either return minus one or one depending if we press a or d so we're going to get that value and from that value i'm going to get the absolute so I'm going to get the absolute value, which is the positive. It will convert it into the positive. And if it's greater than a float, and that float is going to be 0.25, and then if that is the value, if that is true, we are going to say here, roll override to be true. How do we know if it's greater than 0.25? Well, as I said, it is going to return a value when we press down the button and a or D in this case for the role axis, and that will be it. I'm going to do the same thing here for this sequence. I'm going to go inside of a branch and that branch can go over here, something like that. Voila, there you go. And if this branch is true, I am going to set the role override to be true as well. So set the role override to true. And over here, set the pitch override to be true or basically i think over here no we have to set the yaw override so over here set yaw or actually no that's it that's it we don't have yaw so this goes over here and this goes over here because we are overriding both if we want to move up or down that is the issue here and in order to do that we are going to right click get the pitch axis because over here the pitch axis if i go look at that the pitch axis is s or w which is minus one or one meaning we're going up or down that is why we're over overriding both and we're going to do the same thing so we are going to make it an absolute value and test if that absolute va value is greater than 0.25 so from here 0.25 if that is the case then we're going to override both of these and i can move these a little bit here voila so this is when we go in the second sequence after we update the physics what's gonna happen when we go in the third sequence when we go in the third sequence we are going to run autopilot and later we will see what the round autopilot is going to do for us but from here run autopilot and who do we need to pass well for the fly target i'm going to say here get controller aim end and this is the end location which is going to be the fly target or towards where we are flying for the out yaw pitch and roll we are going to get here auto yaw that goes here auto pitch that goes here and auto roll that goes here so make sure that you connect all of the appropriate ones the pro appropriate variables in the appropriate nodes okay moving forward and we can take this move a little bit here or we can take all of this move this a little bit here move all of this a little bit upwards so we can make place and more readability because now from the third pitch or third pin actually from this sequence we are going to set the current yaw and set the current yaw did i add here no i didn't so over here we have the current yaw excuse me and this is the local variable and the current pitch and the current roll excuse me for that one so compile and save so from here we're going to set the current yaw and this one double click it so that we can go here there you go make it more readable so how can we set or what is the value of the current yaw well the current yaw is going to be the auto yaw so let's go here and set it it's weird how these axes are pronounced anyways from here we're going to set the current pitch as well and the pitch is going to be set by getting the auto pitch and it's not like plugging it in directly instead i'm going to go here and say select voila so this is going to be our option one and this goes now here so we're going to get the auto pitch or over here we're going to get the pitch axes 
voila like that so it's going to be either one or the two and that is going to be dependable on the pitch override so let's go here and plug that in so if pitch override is true we're going to get the pitch axis if it's not true we're going to get the auto pitch and what i'm going to do next is over here right click and set the current role and we are going to do the same thing as what we did now for the pitch. So for the roll, I'm also going to get the auto roll and I'm going to perform a select. So I'm going to copy the select and post it here. There you go. This one is going to be plugged in here. It's either going to be auto roll or it is going to be get roll axes. And it's going to go here. And for that one, we're going to have the role override as the parameter or the condition for the select. And this is how we are going to set the current pitch and role and yaw. Voila. Okay, so the last one, so the last over here, pin in the sequence and this can go over here the last pin is also going to go inside of a sequence and i'm going to move the sequence over here i'm going to double click this so that we can move this pin there you go it is readable voila so what i'm going to do with this one is first things first I am going to get my aircraft and I'm going to add force to him. So I'm going to say add force because first we're going to add force to make him move. And again, let's make sure they're a little bit down. So first adding the force to our aircraft and what is the force that we are going to add? Let me just click here. The force is going to be get actor forward vector because we are moving forward so we need to add the forward or get the forward vector we need to multiply that forward vector with a float and the resulting value is going to be the force and with which float are we going to multiply it well over here i'm going to get the thirst and from the thirst i'm going to multiply that with another float and that is the one that's going to be plugged in here and the float is going to be our force multiplier voila and put it over there and compile and save that and again move it a little bit up so first as i said we're adding the force next and may the may the force be with you my friend anyways next we are going to take the aircraft and move it over here again and next we are going to add the torque and the torque is in radians and from here i'm going to plug this executable node and now move it over here and this goes over here and the torque is going to rotate the aircraft so the torque is rotation basically so for that what i'm going to do is get the current yaw I'm also going to get the current roll and get the current pitch, voila. So we need these two, three bad boys. And we're going to make a vector. So the roll goes in the X, the pitch goes in the Y, and the yaw goes in the Z, if I can, you know, select them properly. And we're also going to get the turn torque. Let me just see where it is. There you go. And we're going to multiply that with a vector and we're going to multiply with the returning value of this vector and i'm also going to well first move these a little bit forward because we need to move these down and i'm going to right click and get the actor transform because we need this transform in order to transform a direction so transform a direction and the direction we want to transform is the one that we have just calculated, which is going to give us the direction where should we roll over or basically where should we rotate, left or right. And when that is done, we are going to multiply this result with a float and that result goes here in the torque. And again, I'm going to use the force multiplier as the multiplier for that. So basically that would be it. And this is going to add torque while this one is going to add force to the aircraft. And these are, as you can see, we're just calculating should we roll override or pitch override and stuff like that. It's not that, you know, based on that, we are going to select over here auto pitch or 
pitch axis, which are basically just the numbers. So this is what we're calculating here, essentially. Should we get, which numbers are we going to get? So let's go here in the run autopilot, which is one of the most important functionalities, which is going to go inside of a sequence and I'm going to move it from here like that. There you go. So what are we going to do in this first sequence? Well, in the first sequence, I'm going to right click and we are going to say set local fly target. And we are going to plug in this over here. Let's go if it allows me to plug it in. This is what's gonna happen in the first sequence because we're going to have three sequences over here, okay? So this one goes here. And in order to calculate the local fly target, I'm going to right click and get the actor transform. And from the actor transform, I'm going to inverse, I'm going to say inverse transform location. Here it is, this is what we want. Transform, and if you see here, transforms the position by the inverse of the supply transform. For example, if T was an object transform, this would transform a position from world space to local space. Essentially, it's going to inverse it from local to world and vice versa. And to do that, we are going to get the, so get fly target, and we need this one, not local, but this one. So get the fly target, which is the one from the parameter, and compile and save that. So this is what we are inversing, and then we are going to normalize it. So normalizing it, and this goes a little bit here as well. So move it forward. After we normalize it, we are going to multiply it with a float and the float with which we are going to multiply it, I'm going to take this and set it like this over here, or probably like this here and here and multiply it over here. The float by which we are going to multiply is going to be sensitivity and plug that in over here and this goes inside of the set local fly target. Okay, so what are we doing after that? Well, after that, we're going to set the angle off target. So set angle off target after we, after we calculate this. And in order to calculate the angle off target, I am going to get the fly target. So right click get fly target again. And what I'm going to do is subtract from it a vector. And the vector I'm going to subtract is going to be right click get actor location. So we are subtracting from the target where we're going, the current location where we are at, and then we're going to normalize that. So when we normalize it, next we are going to well, first move these down. There we go. Right click over here, get actor forward vector. And when I get the forward vector from the actor, I'm going to get a dot product from these two. And that dot product, I am going to use a cos D, which degrees over here returns inverse of the cosine, which basically is some complicated math that I don't even understand, but I found it online and I know it works. This is programming. <laughs> I don't know else what to say. I plan to do a math for Unreal Engine as well as Unity. So if you have some specifics, because I have some books where I'm going to learn all of these, you know, what is this and how it works, you know, so that I can create my own engine and probably sell it for billion dollars. Not true, but you get the point. Anyways, this is for the first sequence. Now from the second sequence, and I'm going to move this down. From the second sequence, I'm going to say set by reference and the value that I'm going to set by the reference is going to be the pitch value. So first things first is going to be the pitch value. Let me just check that quickly over here to see. Actually, it's going to be the yaw. So the yaw goes over here, which is going to be the target value. Let me just double click that and move it from here. There you go. And setting the value by reference means that the value that we set is going to be, you know, it is going to reflect to the value that we pass as a parameter. So that it that's what means by reference. And to set that, I'm going to right click over here and I'm going to move this over here. Actually, no, 
because it will obscure this sequence. Anyways, you get the point. That's why these nodes are a little bit complicated. You can go here. So I'm going to right click over here and say get local fly target. And from there, I'm going to break the vector. So break vector. And from this vector, I'm going to clamp the Y value. So clamp on this float and it's going to be clamped between minus one and one. And this is the value that I'm going to put over here for this one, okay? So we can take this over here, move it a little bit up so that it doesn't obscure what we are doing here. There you go. So next I am going to do basically the same thing. So I'm going to copy this by reference and the second flow that we are going to set is going to be the pitch. So pitch goes over here, which is the target that's going to be set. And I am going to do something like this, move this over here. There you go. So that we can, you know, have, don't have spaghetti node. And this goes plugged in over here. And how we're going to calculate the reference of this float? Well, I am going to get the Z. So I'm going to clamp the value again. And the value clamped is going to be between minus one and one. It's going to go here. And the Z from the broken vector of the fly target is going to go inside of the actual, not in the maximum, but in the value over here. What did I do? So break, there you go. And this one goes here, move it a little bit down. This one goes here, there you go. So the Z value is going to go inside of this clamp and voila, not like that, unselect that one. There you go. And that is the value that I'm going to set over here for the pitch. So this one is for the pitch and the first one is for the yaw. Now, when it comes to our Z, then for that, or basically for the roll, what we need to do is I'm going to go here and set the aggressive roll. So this is from the third sequence, okay? So this goes over here, voila. And in order to set this, I'm going to right click, get local fly target and from the local fly target I'm going to break the vector so break vector and when I break the vector we're going to get the y value and clamp it so clamp the float there you go and the clamped value is going to go here for the aggressive roll and we're going to clamp it between minus one and one and clamp by the way you see it returns the values clamp between A and B, inclusive, meaning it will include both values. So this value that we pass over here, it can either, or the minimum it can be is minus one and the maximum it can be is one. And that's what we are doing over here. So after we set the aggressive roll, we're going to set the wings level roll. And to set the wings level, level roll, we are going to get the right vector. What did I do here? So get actor right vector. This is what I want. And from the right vector, I'm going to break the vector and I'm going to plug it in from the Z axis. That's what I'm plugging in. Last but not least is our set wings level influence. This is for the local variables when I say last but not least, because I'm going to right click over here and say angle off target. This is what I'm going to get first that we have already calculated. And I'm going to say normalize to range. And the normalization is going to be clamped. So clamp. And that is the flow that I'm going to clamp. And I'm going to clamp it between zero and one. And that is the value for the wings level influence. But the range here from the angle target is going to go from zero to the aggressive. So it's actually aggressive turn angle. There you go. This is get. So let me go here and right click get aggressive turn angle. This is what I want, not the set. And this is the maximum value in this range. So from zero up to there. And now we are going to copy this set float by reference and not this one over here. 
because now last but not least we are going to set our role so let's go over here and take the role and that is a target that's going to be set but i'm also going to double click this so that we can you know i'm spaghetti this whatever you can we're gonna call it but i do like spaghetti though anyways to calculate this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and get the wings level roll. And I'm also going to get the aggressive roll. So get aggressive, aggressive roll. There you go. Voila. I'm also going to right click. Come on. It does not allow me to right click wing level influence. I'm going to get that as well. And I am going to lerp. So lerp. Come on, does it allow me to lerp? There you go, finally. So lerp from A, which is going to be the wings level roll, to the aggressive roll, and the alpha is going to be the influence, which is going to be plugged in over here, and this is how we are going to calculate our roll. And that will be pretty much it for this functionality, so compile and save that. Make sure that you compile and save this as well. And finally, we can go inside of the event graph and do all of the stuff to make this work. So over here from the begin play after we create and add our widget to the viewport, I am going to get the controller root and from it I'm going to set the absolute, so absolute for the transformation and over here plug it in. We are going to check the checkboxes for the new absolute rotation and new absolute scale and make sure that you compile and save that. Next what I'm going to do is create here a custom so right right click custom event and I'm going to call this one update HUD because we are going to update the HUD as we saw in the preview because the HUD is you know like following us all the time and this is going to go inside of a sequence there you go. So the first thing that we are going to do in this sequence is I'm going to go and get the HUD reference and let me just see where it is. Here is the HUD reference and I'm going to call the set the bore site image position. This one goes here and the value that we are going to use as the widget position is going to get the, so right click, get layer controller. And from the player control, I must move these a little bit here. There you go. So get the player controller and from there I'm going to project world location to widget position, which is basically going to convert the position from the world and we are going to from the world to the HUD reference basically. And we can plug this in over here, which is going to know where the UI element should be positioned on screen based on the world location. And what we are going to do for this, and I'm going to take this from here. Okay, so this goes here like that. Voila. For the world location that we want here, we're going to right click and say get bore side end location which is our pure function if I double click it this is what it is returning that we already know going here in the event graph voila there you go so this is for the bore side image next I am going to get the HUD reference again and from there we are going to set the aim image position and this goes in the second sequence there you go. So this can go over here, move it a little bit down if you wish. And I'm going to get the player controller and also project again the position from the world position. So this goes here and this goes over here. But for the world location now I'm going to right click and I'm going to say get controller aim end location. And that is going to be plugged in here. So compile and save that. This is when it comes to position or controlling the HUD. I'm also going to go here and right click custom event. And I would call this one update physics, which is going to be very similar, similar, simple, because from here we're simply going to say update aircraft physics. That's all there is to it and compile and save that. From here, I'm going to create my event tick. And for the tick event, I am going to set the delta seconds 
to the value of the delta seconds. And from there, I'm going to update physics, which is the one that we have just created, custom event. And we're going to update HUD as well, which is the previous one that we have created. Now, of course, we are still not done. We have a few more things to do, such as creating another. So let's go here, right click, and this is going to be custom event that I'm going to call rotate rig and compile and save that. So from here, this one is going to have two inputs and both of these are going to be float. So one is going to be input X and the second is going to be input Y. And from here, I'm going to get the controller aim scene. And for the scene, I'm going to say add world rotation. So this is the first thing that we're going to do to add the rotation for the controller scene. And to do that, I am going to get this camera that we have attached on our actor. And this camera, I'm going to get up vector. So I'm going to get the up vector from the camera and I am going to create a rotator from an axis and angle. So the axis is the one that we have provided. So let's move this from here. The axis is the up vector from the main camera. The angle is going to be the X or the input X is the angle. So let's go here and move this a little bit down. There you go. And the returning value is going to be plugged in as the rotation for the controller aim scene. I'm going to do something similar. So I'm going to take the main camera from here and I'm going to get the right vector. There you go. I'm going to get the right vector this time. And I'm also going to create a rotator from axis and angle. And the axis is going to be the right vector, but the angle is going to be the Y input. So double click on the node. There you go. Because now I'm going to get the controller aim scene one more time. And what did I do here? So this goes here. There you go. And from here, I'm going to say add world rotation one more time. But this time, this is going to be a different rotation because first we're adding a rotation from the up vector. Now we're adding a rotation from the right vector. So this goes plugged in over here. Now, next or the last thing that we need to do is get the camera rig scene, which is this one over here. And I am going to set the world rotation for it because the last thing that we're going to set is that. But we do need to perform some calculations for it. So the first thing that I am going to do is I'm going to right click here and I'm going to say get controller aim and controller aim and location. And I'm going to subtract from it a vector. So I'm going to say minus vector. And the vector I'm going to subtract is going to be the camera rig scene and get the world location and that is the vector I'm going to subtract from this one and when I do that I am going to make a rotation from x and z from the returning value but this is the x that we have and the z is going to be calculated by getting the get up vector and now that we have the up vector I'm going to right click here I'm going to say make vector and this vector is only going to have one on the Z axis because now I'm going to go into the select and we are either going to select this vector or we are going to select the up vector from the camera rig scene and the index or the condition that we are basing that upon is going to be controller aim scene. And from the controller aim scene get forward vector. And when I get that, I'm going to break that vector and move this a little bit backwards. So when I break that vector, I'm going to test if the Z from it, so moving this here, if the Z is less than the float and the float is going to be 0.9 and that is going to be our condition. So if it's true, we are going to use the up vector. If it's false, we're going to use the vector that we have over here, which is Z set to one. And that is what's going to be plugged in here to create a rotation from X and Z. So now I am going to go here and get the camera 
rig scene and get the world rotation. So world rotation from it. And this one should be good on should go over here. Basically, we should move these just a little bit down. If I am able to select them all. There you go, goes over here. So that I can lower these just a little bit down. So now I have the camera rig scene and the world rotation from it. And I'm going to call the damp functionality from this one. And this goes here and the result from the dump damp or dump functionality is going to go inside of here. So in the new rotation, but the B is going to be this one over here, the rotation that we have calculated camera smooth. Let me just see where it is. There you go. Camera smooth is going to go into the lamp. The time and delta seconds is going to go over here in the delta seconds. So we're going to check the checkbox for the shortest path because we want to calculate the shortest path for that. And that would be it. And the last thing that will be it. And the last thing <laughs> over here, I'm going to right click and we want the input axis look up and right click. We want the input axis axis look right. There you go. And over here, I'm going to say rotate rig. So this one goes rotate rig. This one as well goes here into the rotate rig can be like this. Let me just move them a little bit upwards and I'm going to get the mouse sensitivity. There you go. And first things first over here, I'm going to take the axis value and multiply that with a float and the float is the mouse sensitivity and that is going to be plugged into the input Y and over here, I'm also going to multiply this with the float. The float is going to be the axis value and this value goes into the input X and compile and save that and look up is over here defined. So we have the look up, which has our mouse Y and look right has the mouse X, which means when we move the mouses left, right, you get the point. It is going to rotate. It is going to rotate the camera because rotate the rig has everything to do with the camera. As you can see over here, we're rotating the camera rig scene and that is also, or also with it, we are rotating the controller aim scene, which we will see in a few moments because now make sure that you compile and save that over here. So compile and save everything is prepared over here in the modes. I have everything prepared aircraft. So if I hit the play button, we will see that aircraft and look at that. You see now when I do the rotation, you see he's rotating. This is on the left side. This is on the right. And now let me see if I can control this bad boy. Yes, I can. You see, you need to rotate him in order to, I don't know if this is how a real aircraft works. So I rotate him a little bit to the left and then I move him upwards and he goes to the left side. If I move him downwards, if I let's go rotate him like this here, there you go. And like this, like this. And you also see the yellow thing. You see, this is our HUD. Actually, I need to go up, 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 go up. There you go. You get the point. We can pass through all of these here. We have the aim over there that is, you know, in front of us based on the calculations that we have performed. And you can check that back in the code. If something is not, you know, clear in the code, as I said, make sure that you ask in the comments down below. But again, this is not a beginner tutorial. That's why I didn't explain all of the things in depth. I expect you to know the majority of these things. Because again, it's not a beginner tutorial. If you are a beginner, join my game development academy. Even if you're an advanced user, you can join my academy because I have way better tutorials than this one. This is just, you know, a funny project and you know, I'm dead. There you go. This is just a funny project. And if you see this simulate physics for whatever reason, I don't know why I need to go here and select this SM craft and then go here and check this and uncheck it or First uncheck it, then check it. It was already there. It was set up, compile and same for whatever reason. Now, if I, you know, run the game, if I close it, we don't see the same error as we did a few moments 
moments ago. Anyways, join the Academy. Link is down below in the description. Click it, join it. I want to see you right there because you have direct access to me here on YouTube. Sometimes I answer questions, sometimes I don't. The questions are too complicated. I don't have time because my time is dedicated to people in the Academy. So if you want my time, join the Academy and I will see you guys in the next video.